This is the second take of this. I, I, I mean, since it's the second take, we're, I'm sorry. It's just going to be a little bit, it's just going to be a little bit uh, disjointed here to start. So, um, while we get things set up here, welcome to uh, the second take. And on a late day, um, the 26th episode of the Rambling Rogue Show. Now, thanks to you, listener, Jai's Rogue here, your host, Rambling Rogue, a.k.a. Uh, Jai's in the Jungle, whatever you want, you, you want to associate me as has made it to 26 episodes and because of that you know we're very happy and glad and um you know for all the viewers that have come and um you know shout out to the uh whoa, 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 let's get some shout outs let's get some shout outs shout out to the uh autistic children on the internet tv on youtube it's quite a uh, very interesting name there you know i mean i don't really know what you're doing there with that one but um as you can tell friendly listener I'm um, a little bit dabbed out here. Your, your host is a little bit off the um, concentrates. But anyway, we're here for you. We're here for you, and we're we're here to talk. We're here to ramble. We're here to go on and on. You know, I mean, um, if someone even say that it is, and and I would agree. So you know, uh. Strap your belts on. Remember that this is a podcast solely about basically having voice filler. You know, if you ever just if you're a fan of just just, uh, you know, a person that's just going on, you know, there's 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 people out there, you know, they just they're able to just literally sit down and listen to, I guess, the sound of a voice. And that's able to just, you know, just guide them and coast them through. You know, some people use music, you know, to kind of do the same effect. But but there are people out there that, you know, just like some voice filler, you know, you just like some stuff in the background, you like to just hear some stuff, you know, you know, you're not really particular on, you know, what it is, really. It's like, it's just, you know, it's just there, you know, like, just and, 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 and more than that, it's just like, you know, sometimes maybe you are interested, you know, maybe, maybe you want to get into it a little bit, you know, I mean, what's this guy talking about? What's it, you know, I mean, he's going on and on about, uh, what do we got on the docket today? He's going on and on about a guy that's named Richard and Bernard, you know, that he's having a conversation with. And, um, you know, what's that all about? I mean, it's nonsense. It sounds ridiculous, but it's on and it's there. It's something that's happening. And it just, um, I don't know, a friend of mine, not even a friend, though. Friendly listener, if I'm actually going to be honest, it's actually um, my uh, crush that I'm referencing. My ex crush, uh, the one that I was covering on the Crush Chronicles series on the Rambling Rogue show and on Dreadlock Journey, um, you know, she actually, uh, she let me know something. She said that uh, you know when you're reading, it's easier to read when you feel like you know they or, or she said something about how people have found that for some people or I don't know some people like that it's easier to read when there's a busy work going on around them or, you know, when they've been put on a deadline. So like, let's say, you know, like a flight, you know, it's easy to read during a flight or it's easy to read if like, um, let's say I'm going to flirt with a girl and she's actually at work and, um, you know, like she can't always like talk to me. So she's working at a diner or whatever. So I just read in the, you know, between time. But whenever she comes over to my section, Hey, you know, I flirt with her that, I mean that that that's I that's that's a, a clear enough example I guess I could give. So it's like I feel like that's very true and I feel like there's something to that and you know for me yeah, the rambling rogue show. I mean, I don't know how we got here. But we're here. And we're talking about a guy that's named Richard and Bernard and we're talking about reading and we're talking about <clears throat> Paying attention. No, we weren't talking about paying attention. I totally forgot what we were talking about. So I'm just like overlapping and just going over everything. Again, this is the second take of this. 26th episode of the Rambling Rogue Show. Listener, technology sucks sometimes. Um, 
if you follow me on Instagram at G I R E S I N D A J U N G L E, just put in G I R E S and I'll it'll probably come up at Jai's in the Jungle. Um, if you follow me there, you'll actually see the Instagram video that I posted where I lay out that yeah, man, you know, technology, technology sucks sometimes. Oh, can can you see my hand? No, you can't. Okay. No. No, but I lay out that technology sucks sometimes. And, you know, that has to be said and that has to be acknowledged. You know, I didn't really know that anybody would really try to acknowledge that. I didn't really know that. But, um, you know, I got a, I got a friendly comment in there on that Instagram video from uh, from one of our troops. So, uh, hold on. Let's, let's see. Which one would be good here? Oh, yeah. Let's get one of these going. Let's get one of these going. So salute to our troops. That one was for you. Uh, I got a comment from our uh, troop out uh, in Oceania, I believe. Gavin Mate. And uh, our Gavin Allen. I don't know what he goes by, like, you know, out in the world. But he's the mate to everybody. And, um, or at least everybody I know. It's 10.55 a.m. I forgot to go over the time. It's a little morning. It's a little early and like I'm not quite totally situated. Tired. But the mate. Salute to the mate. You know, he 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 gave that Instagram comment. He says, That's the next segment. When I'm up there or something like that. You know, I'm, I was stoned when I saw it. And I was like, Oh yeah, man, I'm I'm down if you are, you know, because um Yeah, man, you know, I, I'm sure he would be able to really be able to let us know just how bad technology can get, I mean. You know, your guy, you're a guy on a on a ship or whatever. And let's say the air conditioning just breaks, you know? I mean, there is no fucking like person you call. There is no there's just you and everybody that's there and um you got to you got to fix that shit. And, and you know, they might have a repair crew. But the shit that they have to repair might be very difficult, you know, on these ships and and things like that. So, salute to the troops. You know, you guys do a uh, crazy job that a lot of people don't want to do, including myself. And um, that's why I love living here. I don't have to do it. I, I You know, um, yeah, so salute to the troops. This is the Rambling Rogue Show, episode 26. Phone's going off, you know. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a totally unprofessional episode. I, I, I was catching some heat, catching some heat on Twitter from um, my ex-co-host, Soon to be future co-host. Spoiler. Um. About my I guess my thoughts on Donald Glover just basically just transcending. And I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm fine with it. It's not like I want to see him lose or anything like that. You know, I'm still a great supporter of him. But it's just like, dude, why does like why do you have to be? Why does he? Why is he trending after dropping three songs? I mean. Does every artist do that? I mean, I don't know. I, I saw him trending, and it just seemed like like trending not even just in, like, black Twitter, but just in, like, general, right? Like, because, I mean, and I don't even know exactly how Twitter works, but I, I'm under the assumption that there is your own smaller sphere of trending that you all, all like, that you and your people see. And then there is the, like, just overarching, just trending that, like, you know, if something huge happens, happens. And I thought I saw it there, man. Like, it was just, like, on the top. And I was just like, oh, my God. He drops three songs. Like, I don't know, man. Why can't we just enjoy something? It just has all this hype around it. And um, I feel like hype oftentimes makes things... It, it oftentimes can, like, misconstrued shit for trendy so you know what I mean? Like, I, I like Donald Glover, you know? I like his music. I don't like all of his music. You know, some of it I think is a little bit too... Is a little bit too, like... Mm, I guess the word I would say is just mm, campy. Like, you know, and, it's, and maybe it's a little bit too... I don't know. Too sh sugary sweet a little bit sometimes. Some of his older music. But... 
at the same time, does he have to be trending when he comes out now and he's like now recognized for his, his shit? I don't know. I mean, you could just enjoy it. You know, I mean, because once he's trending and once he's trendy and once it's just a trend to like Donald Glover, I just don't like where that goes. I don't really like just throwing out Donald Glover, you know, just at some point because that's what it, that's what they like to do. You know, that's what, that's what, that's what pop, you know, likes to do and things like that. So obscurity likes to just really enjoy and they like to preserve and they like to, you know, they like to cult out, you know, but but pop it just likes to just have something in the spotlight and then like you know and again this dude is like if you've ever seen his interviews you know why he doesn't like doing fucking radio interviews or just talking interviews especially at the level that he's at now i mean it's just like come on man this guy opens his fucking mouth and he's just gonna just i mean for if he's just talking for at length for too long he's just too open a mind too just too all over the place and i love that about him honestly that's one of the things that i personally like about him i mean but i think he's just too all over the place with the way he thinks i mean he's just very free in thought and by that i mean that you know having a thought and then just saying it out loud seeing what the room feels like is is like a thing that he's like it seems to be used to so like and you could tell and then so he would jump into other situations where maybe quite you know that's not you know exactly how you should act or i wouldn't say should but Maybe that's not how, you know, would be well perceived. And then it's just like, okay, he's a weirdo. And you don't want weirdo when you're ascending to the top with number one FX show, fucking, you know, groundbreaking, uh, you know, uh, a music video, and then and then Redbone, the whole album, Grammy nominee. Um, it's an image that you have to play. You have to play ball. And it's a fucking Han Solo movie, goddammit. Um, look at Lakeith Stanfield. If Lakeith Stanfield was like, was like, like really, really talented, like, and I'm not saying he's not talented. Um, he, he's a local dude. Salute to Lakeith. He came straight out of, uh, uh, I, th- I believe Riverside. And, um, so that's the IE local dude. And he just, and what, what does he say? He, he hacked Hollywood or he hacked into Hollywood, man. And, and I, I believe that any one of us could do that, you know what I'm saying? In our own way. And, you know, honestly, he is a beacon of light that gets me forward. But, and sorry, I'm going on, but, um, Lakeith, if you look at Lakeith, he's very talented, but sometimes, you know, he's, he's a little eclectic. He goes on, he goes on and, um, you know, he gets excited and he says it's characters. He says this, it's, he says it's that, but at the end of the day, you know, that doesn't play well on like the grand scale. So, I mean, I mean, and, and I've even seen him j- just having to play ball with, like, all this different shit, you know, like, you know, just because of that Sorry to Bother You movie that's coming out, which I am planning to see. Um, and it just sucks, you know, like, you kind of have to do, you do kind of have to sense yourself when you want to ascend. But um, when you want to get those looks, when when you drop three songs and everybody's literally everybody's just on it for just what the fuck no reason whether literally i saw a tweet first three seconds of these songs and it's just immediately fire like like yes and i will enjoy the songs myself personally but when i just look at the social sphere of it and how people are enjoying donald glover it just seems to me like tomorrow is just going to be another thing that they're enjoying and then they're just gonna and i hope it's not this i hope i would be wrong about this but i hope I really do hope I would be wrong about this, but 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 I I would even foresee people even ridiculing Donald Glover and maybe even just like in general I don't know just coming to just turn on him I don't know because it's like just a very trendy very trendy vibe of of his whole ascent into like uh, visibility um, these past I guess you could say I mean ever since you know about the Grammys you know and in Atlanta. Which I mean, again, it's all based on his. Um, it's all based on his successes, his achievements that he's even gotten here. But it's just, I feel like people should be viewing him more like a, a motherfucking like. I don't even know. And I feel like the way they're viewing him now is like disposable. Like he's really good. But like, yeah.
but like he's disposable. Who did they say was really good for like for? Yeah, like I don't know. Let me get off of it. Donald Glover. That's what I was coming in on. Episode twenty six of the Rambling Rogue Show. We are here. You know what I'm saying, listener. You are the you are the best. I love you. So you know what I'm. You know. You get one of those, listener. Um, so basically, you get one of those just because of the fact that, listener, I'll be honest with you. Um, today, we've got a full docket, and I haven't gotten to any of it. I'm just honestly just lazy and just beating around it. I mean, um, I, was, I, I meant to go on about Richard, who's also named Bernard, who's a security guard. Okay, um, that's a bar, and don't you dare steal that. That's mine. Wow. Okay. Um. Anyway. Oh Jesus. Anyway, uh, I had a conversation with him, and that was cool, and I might make that into a song now. So, you know what? Congrats me. Congrats me. Congrats. Congrats me. Um. What else we got here? The reason why this is coming out on Wednesday. Oh, my God. Do I even want to tell the story? So I had some female interaction. Listener. Um, you'll be surprised to know. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Anyway, no, nah, no, nah, but <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, man, I know it does. But, yes, I had some female interaction yesterday. And, uh, you know, shit. It was cool, man. But it wasn't cool because it was just, it was like weird energy. And um, fuck it. This is the Rambling Rogue Show. Yeah, I mean, what do I have a podcast for if not to just divulge random details about my life? Um. Yeah, I know, man. So basically, I was going to get into this on the last podcast, but it's actually cool that this all just happened so I could just recount this. Uh, you know, I get into a bit of a conversation with somebody that I went into high school with and came out of high school with. She actually graduated with me and, um, you know, whatever. Like, we never really were super close in high school, but both of our groups, like her gr- group of friends, like girlfriends, you know, would kind of hang out with my group of just guy friends or whatever. And... um so whatever, you know, like I, uh, you know, hit her up because she tweets out somebody recommended a good book. You know what I'm saying? Um, I pull up with the good book in the DM and, you know, kind of just subtly don't really, you know, because I've done this in the past where uh, I've just kind of jumped into situations that I've just overdone. And this time now, nah, man, I if honestly, I'll even read the motherfucking messages. There are not many messages. I was very subtle. You know, like, I, I think I tried to be, you know what I'm saying, just, I tried to be just, just, just forthcoming, I think, and maybe I was a little bit too direct at times, but maybe I wasn't. Listener, you'll, you'll, you'll be the judge, you'll be the judge. Um, yeah, so basically, let's see, this is how far we'll go back here. So, we essentially decide that, uh, you know, we're gonna actually trade the book. And that we're going to actually do it whenever we can meet. Um, there was supposed to be a party that was supposed to happen that fell through that we were going to meet at, but then we didn't. So what ends up happening, listener, is she actually ends up just like kind of waiting. And I'm just like, all right, um, right, let's just go to Starbucks or something. We just go. And then I could just give you this book because the book, Things Fall Apart by Chinua Uh it's kind of an esoteric read. And by that, I mean, it's a it's a book where it's like it's so rooted into what it's talking about. Like it assumes a lot that, you know, the things or at least like are briefed like lightly on the on the uh, I guess some of the nuance. Um, And by that, I mean, you know, some of like the ease in language, like how easily the book will just weave in and out of the uh, the native language to like, you know, and just older language in general and um, to just 
just different things like that. So it's it's it, it can be a bit of a different read. And then also they say that the uh, the main character, Okonkwo, the the warrior character. Um, I mean, not even they say. I mean, it's a great. I I say it myself. He's a very complex dude, but not at the same time. And you know, I basically just pitched it to her that. Hey, we'd go to Starbucks. I'd be able to explain that to you in a further smallest, you know, little synopsis. And uh, pretty much that was it. Um, so what did I say? Yeah, I could brief you a bit more on the complexities of the book. The main character is deep, but not at the same time. And then, you know, so she says, all right, yes. And then, you know, we just go on with a little bit of banter or whatever, just like some LOLs, you know, stuff like that. And then I said, um yo are you gonna be blonde responding to like a tweet that she put out and then like where she said that she was gonna get like her hair dyed or whatever and then i said also are you a day or night person i was asking that because this is after i had already asked her out so i was just trying to get okay when do you when are you trying to go out and like do this thing she said that she's a night person and basically i go on and find out that um she dyed her hair and then I mean, not even that she dyed her hair, but that she that she did it, and um, because I actually had forgot about that actually. So not even that I found out, but I forgot because again, we did go to the same high school. Um, oh yeah, I did. Um, so basically, I asked her a couple days back if she wants to go the next day or whatever, and then you know she says because she has siblings to watch. Um, Oh, yeah, that's what I also meant to say that I found out. She has siblings to watch. She, you know, she has younger siblings, you know, et cetera. She's, you know, um, Latina ch- um, chick. I, I hope that's that's the politically correct way to, 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 to say that. Um, and so basically, yeah, you know, she says that she just is going to, you know, ask if she can just basically go out tomorrow morning. I give her the option to say, you know, if it's not OK, you know, we could just go after, you know, when I get out of work. It's just that's really the only time for me. That's it's cool. Just let me know. Um, and then she says, yeah, you know, I mean, basically let's go for early morning. And I was like, cool. I like that. Like, cause I'm actually an early riser. And, um, so she first kind of like, because we have a conversation at like late at night, she kind of like just puts up the time to like nine ish 10. And then of course, right there, she postpones it over to the later nighttime, right? When around like nine ish to 10 came around. So around when this time comes, I'm straight out of work and I am actually just trying to just take a shower, come home and then just dip. I'm just thinking like, okay, we're just going to have like a cool conversation. It's just cool. I felt like, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe sure, sure. I have intentions in my head that would go past whatever happens at Starbucks. Yet I feel like you know, they're just the mutual place of Starbucks, just just two people just going. I just feel like that should just be like a a really just I don't know, like, I don't know, like I invited you, you were up for it. And then what this chick does last second is say that she's with her friend. And then basically, she just totally breaks away the whole synopsis thing that I was doing. And she says, if it's just getting the book, you know, I could just I could just um, pick it up from your house. Interesting tidbit. Very interesting tidbit. Earlier in the conversation as well, I asked her if um, she was actually... So I asked her if we would go to Starbucks, you know, like if I could just pick her up. And she said, no, I'll take an Uber. Now, this was before even like we would even try to go to Starbucks. This is the day before, like in planning. But I thought that was interesting. How she said, she said, no, I would like to take an Uber. And then I said, okay, that's all right. Now I have my assumptions on why that is and why that isn't, but fine. But later on in this conversation, more recently, then you say, I'm with my friend. And not only am I with my friend, I'm with my friend. And now I want to come to your house because that's okay. And, and then I, I have to say, yeah, um, I think that's a double standard, right? And I think that um, this, like, weird precedent that has been set up that males are just these, like, fucking creep-tastic, like, all of us are just these creep-tastic dudes that just, like, go out praying after chicks and just, they just can't fucking contain themselves. Like, we say and do stupid shit. We do. But, you know, I mean... 
at the same time, I think you can tell when somebody is, is, is just trying to just be polite and when somebody is just like that. And when you can't tell, you know, what I would like in the future, maybe I will never get this. Maybe you can tell me if I'm crazy, but I would just like directness, like just like just let me know, like yo, that's that's creepy because of X Y Z. So and then and then I'm just telling you, just like okay, well why? Like, like back in the day, people would just literally just go up and you would just like just pick somebody up. You would just go up and just ring somebody's doorbell and just talk to their people, and that was okay. But let me tell you why this chick coming to my house was very awkward, because it's not like back in the day. First of all, we went from a date to now you're bringing your friends over to my house randomly to get just a book. It's not just a book. It's like, like, what, what are we talking about? It's definitely not just a book. You know, it's like you being all weird about it and you got to bring you got to bring shields, you know, and that's how people that's how young people are these days. And I'm just seeing now it's just like. I don't know, man, like young people you know passiveness it's it's a funny thing to mess around with it is and um i think you shouldn't mess around with it you know just just go direct you know i mean come on if somebody invites you out to somewhere okay fine you take the uber there so you really didn't want me to see where you live okay so let me go and then what's the worst that could happen like literally like what what like like what i'm gonna i'm gonna what like like really honestly like what like, I don't even understand the fear. Like, like what is, it's just, and you know, so basically these girls come to my, 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 my home and I have the luxury of having a twin brother listener. So because of that, that great luxury listener, I tell my twin brother, because I mean, look at, I mean, if you, if you listen to the text, the verbiage exactly was that she deduced I, basically my whole get up, my whole, my whole pitch, basically she, 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 she 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 deflated it. She said that if it's just getting the book, then I could just come over and just scoop it. And so now this is a, a part of my fault. This is my fault a little bit. My phone must have been silent or whatever, because they had actually. I'm getting ahead of myself. I have the luxury of having a twin brother, and because of that luxury, I told my twin brother to say, "Well, you know, I mean, the, you know them better, and and you are just here. You know, you're here. Yo, could you just go out and." give them the book like she deduced it to and um this actually proved to be a much harder task see what i hoped for was he would just go outside and actually just you know give them the book they would leave and then the night was over you know i wouldn't have to like really see you because you kind of wasted my time and then you wouldn't really have to see me because of whatever because yeah so uh I say that to say this, it failed because not only did this girl bring one friend, but she brought two and then she brought two and, and this didn't work because the second friend she brought <laughs> is a fucking close ass friend of mine. And like, she's a friend in the way that's like, it's totally platonic, but it's like, we just kind of are just very similar and I mean, like, we just gravitate towards each other naturally. Plus, we have not seen each other in a long-ass time. So, me and that person start talking. And then my brother takes the other two girls and they start, yeah, washing my mom's car. I mean, I'm not telling this story totally correctly, but I'm getting on the main points. They start washing my brother's and my mom's car, which makes me cringe like a madman because I, I don't even know what's happening. It's about 9.40 at night and girls are just washing my fucking cars. And it's like, I mean, that's, that's, it's cool, right? I guess that's, 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 um, swag, but, but you know, no, <laughs> it's fucking awkward. And, and, and I didn't even want to go outside to begin with. I was, I mean, I wasn't hiding. Honestly, I really wanted not just to just fucking just hand that shit off and they would just dip, but <laughs> not only did the, and, and, and here's the other thing too. Here's the thing I like. I gave these chicks, I gave these chicks the motherfucking uh i gave these chicks the the street address you see the way my house is set up i don't want to give too much details i mean i'm sure i've already given so many details about my life and, and shit like that in my location but going forward i just want to be better about it because who knows who's watching anyway 
it's a duplex and you have to go up an alley. And essentially, I when you give the street address, it just points you to the street. When you give the actual apartment number, then it gives you to the it points you to like my my crib. I didn't give her the apartment number, but these chicks literally drove their car and parked behind my mother's car, which is like it's like so imagine if it's an alleyway that leads into a very tiny parking lot that's in just the back of the alleyway. And then they just park literally so that it, they're horizontal in the middle of the ha the alleyway so that theoretically, yes, one car could get behind them, but they would have to do many maneuvers to get out. It's just so that happens. And it's a long ass car too. It was like a, a fat ass family car, man. That, that car was long as a motherfucker. That shit was like a big ass XLE Camry. That shit was the big body. That shit was no, no, real, for real though. And and I was about to say that chick's name, but honestly, shout out to the Gotti. Um, real shit. That's that's the big body, nigga. Oh my god. But anyway, yo. Yeah, man, these chicks come over and they're fucking washing this car, and I'm having like a really great conversation with somebody that's most likely gonna be on the podcast soon. And uh, you know, yeah, it was just awkward. It was just an awkward thing. Um, I I thought I thought I thought that as an adult. I just would just stop with kitty shit like like that. You know, like I thought that's I mean, and, and here's the other thing too the the appeal of the girl. I mean, again, we're trading off a book. It's that she's more mature. It's that she's like a little bit, you know, just a kind of not doing that types of shit. She's just more. But it just turns. It's just like, I mean, I don't want to judge and I don't want to characterize and none of that. I'm just saying in that instance, it's just like you really kind of just showed how like you just don't stand on your own like you, you kind of just need people to and like and that i mean i'm just i'm just asking as like just millennials or even actually no we're generation z so we're people that have been basically totally fed on like the internet and internet culture so with that being said you know i mean yeah It can be hard to be social because social media is the only place you have to be cool, is the only place you have to be aware, is the only place you have to be, etc. So when you go out in the world and people are actually any of those things, and forget cool, but really just more just like down to just interact, you know, it's like, it's not that it's awkward, but it's just that, like, it's just harder for some people. And that's what I saw last night. I mean, um, it was just like a total fucking ambush. The one girl that they brought, man, I mean, I'm I'm putting this into the air because fuck it again. I mean, I, I really don't care. I mean, this is no high school bullshit. It's just like I'm just telling the full length of the story. It's just but I it just I just had a total feeling of just like she was such a token. I mean, and and she's she's. She's Hispanic because she is lighter skinned, so I do believe she's Hispanic. But um like actually Hispanic. But um and her yeah, yeah. But um you know, she's kinda like you could feel, at least I could feel, this energy of just outlier energy, and it was just I had it was just very uncomfortable to me. And um I was about to just shriek about it to be honest, but, um, I didn't because we ended up having a really great conversation and, and kind of separating from the group, but I just, I didn't even know why she was there because, ah, oh, gosh, listen, if I could just tell you the whole history of everything, I mean, I won't, but it's just, it really was just the most random. It was just like, okay, imagine, okay, first of all, bringing one friend and that's your best friend. Okay, fine. But then just some random other person who they do hang out with, but it's random and not in the sense that it's random to any one of us in, in this situation. We all know her, but it was just like, if you would have ever guessed anybody that they would have ever brought, you just would not have gone there. Like if anything, and ironically, the person that you would have guessed that they would have brought is actually a person that shares the same name as her. And and she's just totally different. But it, but it, but that person is a person that's more along the lines of literally a best friend. Like, because the, the girl who's, who I was going to give the book to, her best friend, if that other girl who shares that same name with the girl that I'm talking about, if she was there, 
let's say her name is like um angelica so if the other angelica was there oh yeah bro like literally it, it, it would have been so much better like not better but not, not better because if that other angelica is watching it's not better but what i mean is is it would have just meshed better it would have just like went like it would have made more sense but um they fucking pulled that shit and i was just like okay cool like that's that's cool but I have some also opinions about that. I mean, maybe I'm just a conspiracy theorist. But I do believe it was a case where they tried to token this person and they tried to just bring, like, a person that they know is kind of, like, out there as well to kind of just quell the situation. Maybe because it would have just been more awkward without them. And, yeah, and maybe I also even think that that if that person was not there they think that it would have been more awkward and i think that also which and this is a painstaking thing not only if that person was not there would it be more awkward but i feel like this was also a case of we really couldn't get nobody else to fucking come and then we got this person i'm sorry i'm saying that but that's just that's just exactly how i feel like jeez man and i and and honestly I don't mean to comment on, on like female bullshit. I'm just like telling shit how I how I do. Like I just like just having my full thought out as far as I can get it. That's how we do on the Rambling Rogue Show. But um, yeah, if you're listening to this and you and you know you've been in a situation where you've been ambushed or something like that by a bunch of people, and you were just trying to talk to one chick, um, you 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 you'll know how I feel. Um. Yeah. Pretty much. So that's the reason why I actually ended up not recording this podcast until now. We're 40 minutes into this thing, and we haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes, like the giant chunk of, like, podcasts that I really, really, really super want to get into. You know, it's really sad, listener. I know. I'm a, I'm a really bad content creator, honestly. Like, I'm just... I don't even know what to do with myself, honestly. Should we move the episodes of the Rambling Rogue Show to Wednesdays, listener? I mean, I mean... What am I going to do? We're right now just looking for some music listener because, again, like I said, we have some meat and potatoes to get into. It's a music review. A music review. A music music review. YouTube.com. YouTube music. Hold on. Let me look up YouTube music. We've got YouTube music in this house. It's pretty lit pretty lit honestly i mean it's it sucks because there's some albums that for some fudging reason cannot play like die lit by playboy cardi which by the way i'm gonna be headed to the uh july 27th santa Ana observatory playboy cardi show Eh, fuck it we'll be doing a vlog of it dreadlock journey is coming back confirmed anyway uh yeah man Shit's weird. Um, okay. We have some meat and potatoes to get to. Listen, are you ready? Are you ready? Remember Zoe 101? Zoe 101 was... Oh, man. What a simpler time. Remember Chase? Remember casually making fun of Jewish people? For some reason? Like, remember, remember, um... Yeah, remember Hey Arnold? Remember how he's looking for his parents? I didn't. I didn't even remember that. I didn't know that. The movie, I guess, is him finding his parents. At I, I need to watch that. Um. Damn. Why can't I find this album? I'm a terrible DJ. Oh no. Listen, I'm sorry. There we go. All right. All right. Z. My friend. So. We've got an album here to review. And this album is titled Big Ups to the Big Homie. And it's by a Mo Reno Valley rapper by the name of Jody Joe. Now, I'm not going to get into some long synopsis about this album. I'm not going to get into any of that. You know, I had a whole bunch of stuff written out. Honestly, I have a whole fucking Google Doc written out. It's just bullet point after bullet point. And I'm just looking at it right now. Again, this is the second fucking take of this podcast, listener. 
and um you know what i'm just a starting out um content creator and having to recreate content is just it especially long stretched out content like this it's just booty anyway you're just going through the growing pains with me anyway uh you know jody joe here he's put out an album that you know i felt a lot so i'm just gonna just go with my feelings on this one and i'm just gonna just talk straight from the gut it is a 50 minute uh body of work okay and 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 you don't get a lot of bodies of work nowadays especially not from younger people in uh i guess you could say prominent rap but even in just i guess in rap in general you know you could even just see in the indie scene it's spilled into into the soundcloud scene you know, you get a lot of rap that is is just watered down. A lot of people are just trying to make a quick ascent because right now what you have is is this weird thing where, oh Jesus, where we're so, I guess, close to to our dreams. A lot of us. I mean, it really is just one song. It seems like, and we know that we're right there. So. Basically, you have a lot of people just taking over advantage of this and you have a lot of people just making very dime a dozen music and music that just doesn't innovate. It just doesn't push anything forward. It doesn't ask any questions. It doesn't just it just doesn't do anything. It literally just sits there and it digests in your stomach. Um, we all know the SoundCloud rapper that puts out, you know, music that that's like that. Um, how do I feel about critiquing my own peers it's sad but i'm just making a generalization i'm not going to go in and say that any one specific person that i know is like that or doing that i'm just saying that if you look at the landscape of soundcloud especially a lot of the music that comes into the the fucking oh my gosh the fresh pressed and the and the and the motherfucking uh, uh hot and new tracks if you look if you look at a few of those tracks you know you will find people that are just kind of hitting the buttons you, you know they're just hitting the buttons they're not really See, that was me, okay? You can't script that shit, okay? You can't script that shit, okay? And, um, yeah, that's all I got to say on that, pretty much. Jody Joe here, though, has created an album that, unlike all of that that I was ranting about, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, is much more digestible, asks lots of questions, and does so in a way that I really do feel like if you just go into it with an open mind, it puts you into the shoes of a person that's just devoted. Um and and really devoted. Not just like, oh yeah, like I, I go to, and, and not and nobody's perfect. But but like, oh yeah, I just go to church once like every six months. Like these are people that because it's not about how much you go to church, but he's the kind of person that literally at a very young age, I'm not even sure how, how old he is. He can't be too much older than me or younger than me. Um, he's under 20, under 21, around 21 years old. And this dude is just totally about God. And he's totally about that whole thing. Now that's not my thing. Um, you know, I've lost my faith. I keep saying that. I, I I go to church. I literally look at Jesus. I just stare, and I just like I'm just like, all right, we're just getting, we're just trying to get this done. And honestly, it's just it's a very uncomfortable thing. And um, hearing his perspective, he's very much. I can even tell you from from where I'm coming from, he is he's very much, you know, just I guess proficient and really good at breaking it down. So that if you were ever to convert this way, here's how you could see it, you know. And um, he does a really good job, especially on songs like Prayer Room. On songs like Beefing with Demons with that hook. That hook, man. How, do, how does that hook go again? Um, it's like, uh, oh, dude, I wrote it down. So it's just like, like, just to get by, by, oh, my, uh, man. That beef with demons is hard, man. You know what I'm saying? This this whole thing. You know, he's he uses a lot of really popular sounds and he uses a lot of um catchy different little, you know, cadences that you would catch on again, popular rappers' songs. Um that may be where I lead into my only critique of Jody Joe. But at the end of the day, I believe that one day 
with his goal of getting assigned to to a, a major label. He says Dreamville. That's his goal. It's his one thing. It's his aspiration. Um, I do believe that with that freedom, he'll be able to actually find his own voice and will be able to craft something that will be able to just hopefully bridge some kind of gap. Because I, I do feel like uh, there's a lot of people out there that do just need that that soul punch. And um, maybe I need it too. Maybe this album's speaking to me because I really needed it. Um, I can tell you that, you know, for a person that really does not like preachy music, a lot of this did not come off preachy. You know, a lot of the time, I'm just more impressed by the guy's technical ability in rapping. I mean, the guy can rap slow, rap fast. He's switching cadences. He's switching flows. He's, I mean, he's doing triplet flows. He's doing just like, like you know, normal rapping. You know, he's doing, it's, it's, he's all over the place with it. But then he's also singing in the background. And then he, and then he's bragging about on his fucking interlude sketches and interlude skits and things like that, that he fucking engineers his own voice. And he's doing all these different things. And the beats themselves too were not overly, uh, I guess, you know, grand or anything like that. They were just raw and they just felt very, uh, not too minimal, but minimal to the point where, especially on songs like American Idols, that, I mean, it's just, come on, man. It's just so like, it's just, it's just truth. It's just, just easy platforms for truth. Those beats, man. And, um, you get to know that he, he he's making it all and honestly the whole time that's all i'm thinking about i'm just impressed then you get to the lyrical content the con the very consistent lyrical content that spreads over m what i would feel like quite i mean not too many topics but again i think with time but quite a few different topics under the spectrum you know what i mean he talks about being a virgin talks about waiting talks about impressions of lust i mean and and other rappers have gone into this i'm sure i'm not too into christian rap i'm not but Oh God, wait, hold on, hold on, gotta pause this.
Okay, we're back. There was like a huge punch right there because my camera actually just <laughs> filmed to its limit. It actually can only film about uh, 45 minutes. So I've been going on for, I believe, about five-ish minutes just on my own. Oh, sheesh. I really need to mind that in the future. Jeez. Sorry about that, listener. Um, There's probably going to just be some just filler cut in there. I'm going to work hard on that. Um, Yeah, honestly, th this episode is very late, so it's just going to come out late anyway. Um, But that's okay. Anyway, we were having a good discussion about Jody Joe. Jody Joe, you know, um, with 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 his very simple style at beat making, simple but you know soulful, and 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 then when you find out that you know he's just also just this humble dude that could just really spit, and he really can craft a good song with these hooks, um, you know I'm just, you know again it's just the potential that just rings out in him. And then, and then his music videos, these very, um, these visuals that are very, I guess, f very action packed. You know, he's got these. If you, if you just look him up on on um, on Instagram, O G J O D I E J O O G Jody Joe. Um, if you look him up on Instagram, you know, you'll see some of his visuals, um, even just on there. You know, he really knows how to capture that, just just that essence of just urgency and just, hey, we need to do something, and um. I don't know. I think maybe some people could use that. I, I I do think some people could really use that. You know, Jody Joe, previously previously known as uh, Lyle's Raps. I don't know if he still goes by that or that's how I was introduced to him. Um, you know, he's he, he's a dude again. Where I think it's just the main thing about him is the main appeal is you're gonna see a lot of potential, so much fucking potential. When you start to just dig into to, to what he is and when you see him, just potential, 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 potential. To me, to me, and um. Standout songs, again, Incluvenate, That Rejuvenate, um, Beef It With Demons, Prayer Room, you know what I'm saying? The Autobiography of Jody Joe, I really can't go without talking about that. Um, okay, 10 minutes, and I had a really strong opinion about how you basically based your whole life, or at least a good chunk of it, through the lens of a female and your relationship with her. I thought that was very interesting. I thought that was very selfless. And, you know, just for a person like me who's just so narcissistic who's narcissistic, and is just so just to themselves, I just, I really just didn't even know that that was a thing. Maybe. Not not that. I just, I mean, that's just, you're a rare, that's just a rare breed, man. Um, the autobiography of uh, Jody Joe, though, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it's just, just truth, his truth, his perspective, and, um, not a gripping story, not a, it's not, it's not some sort of a, you know, you know, immaculate odyssey or anything like that, but it is this, uh, I guess you could say just very open and honest recollection or recollection of just the past few years of your life, maybe some mistakes that you made, where you need to go in the future. It's just recognizing oneself. It's an artist really trying to be whole and trying to to just circle back and and not not even just as an artist but just as a human just as a person but just this person is now just putting it into music form and they clearly do so I think I do believe that the effect of uh, seeing oneself totally seeing how fucked up shit can get you know on your side where you make a mistake and seeing how you know different thoughts that you can have battle different thoughts and seeing how just living life can just be a struggle um the autobiography of jody joe really just get into that and and big ups to the big homie as a whole project i feel like does this as well the language of lust another standout song for me because of that same sort of element to just break shit down in that honest open way where you're again just reducing yourself to nothing more nothing less than just another person or to exactly the same thing that that that's listening to this, which is just a person, you know, it's just just another person. You're just you're just leveling with them and saying, yeah, it's fucking hard. But this is what I think. Life is hard. And um, but in a much more, I guess, relatable, soft. And then in the story, I guess, contextually um, <clears throat> sexy way. And, um, you know, I appreciate Jody Joe for that really opening up like that. You know, it's 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 a difficult thing. Especially for a guy like that, I'm sure, because those guys, those guys, I mean, with with their females, they're very protective. They're very, you know what I'm saying, very uh, guarded. And um, guys like that, you know what I'm saying, 
Bible thumping dudes. You know what I'm saying? That's, that, you know, again, he's just loyal. And um, to divulge, you know, details like that and to just get into it like that and to be able to do so, not only do I commend it, but I respect it because it's just like you came out. And again, you're so fucking brave, man. And, and I mean, you're just standing on what you're fucking standing on. And um, I would hope you're consistent. I, that's the only thing I would really hope. I just hope you're consistent in day to day life. You know, he is pushing out a lot of rhetoric. And when you push out rhetoric like that, I mean, yes, you attract a certain crowd, but at the same time, he's trying to cross over and it's clear. I mean, you don't sign to Dreamville and you're not getting national attention. So for me, it's like, you know, it's just, again, so much potential to see this guy. I mean, I think the, I think the same effect that a Jesus walks would have had on people in 2000 and whatever, is it, three, four, is the same effect that Jody Joe gives me in that there's that crossover feeling that could happen. It could happen. Not saying it will, not saying he's next up. I mean, I kind of did say that on my Instagram, but yeah. Big ups to the big homie. Big ups to Jody Joe. It's a really good album. 15 minutes of your time. You will have to sit down and actually give this thing a listen. But there are standout songs that really you could just throw into a playlist. American Idols. Again, um, if you really just want some good rapping and some like just some potent shit that just really just cuts, especially with a, a, a fire ass beat with that, that that crazy drum crash or whatever the hell you call it, get that rejuvenate going. You know what I'm saying? Get that, that prayer room. That intro, it will pour fucking honey soul into your like just just get that that prayer room is just soul it's literally just just get that um beefing with demons and yeah what else we got on the docket anything else we've been rambling for 58 minutes here listener can you believe that hmm. still hyped about follow 76 still hyped about um different video games um, I don't know if I've shared it with the with the podcast, but my plan is to become so so I've I've classified it now, listener. I've I've made it basically clear for myself. What I want to be professionally is a musician. But what I want to be personally, when I'm not on the job, when I'm not doing that, is a streamer. And not just a streamer, but just I mean, I want to start out at games. I want to build there, but I would love to just be connected to things and just be just constantly up and just running and and just giving my opinion and just being just a, a platform for other things too to just kind of just always have things jumping off i always like i, I just like activity you know i i do like that kind of stuff so we're going to take a venture into that but of course we're going to start with the twitch streams um we're now saving you know measly amounts from every paycheck so that we can actually uh you know go out and pay for a uh i guess a new computer setup takes a little bit longer than you would you would expect i mean especially nowadays i i would have thought i had it by now at 19 honestly but hey it's fine i'm only 19 i was talking to a guy that was literally 48 45 or whatever he didn't even know his age because he was so young at heart but i was talking to a guy that that was that was that physical age and this guy is just a fucking storyboard artist and he goes to a fucking job. I mean, yeah, he's been at too long, but fuck it. Because that shit pays the fucking bills and it makes it so that he can do the shit that he wants to do every single day. And um, that just, it just really just lit a light in me. It just really, I don't know, did something for me. Just seeing that in the world. Shout out to Richard Bernard, the guy that I was referencing earlier. Anyway, it's a rambling rogue show. We've talked about Jody Joe. We've talked about... Mm, Things that stop this podcast. Mm, 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 mm. What else? I'm taking more pictures. Pictures are fun. Pictures are really fun. I'm finding listener. Pictures are really fun. Um, <laughs> I don't really have anything else to say about that. Uh, yeah, Rambling Rock Show. That's it.